Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll be creating this floating icon effect in After Effects. We'll also be using Adobe Photoshop to cut out the individual icons and animate it inside After Effects. All right, let's get started. All right, the first step is taking a screenshot of your phone and transfer that image inside your computer. Now let's import the image inside Photoshop and we'll start cutting out the individual icons. So the way I like to do is grab the rounded rectangle tool and it'll draw a shape on the icon. Try to be as precise as possible. Make sure you select the shape and draw the shape around this icon you can grab this dot to increase the roundness i don't need this stroke so i'll x that out and i'm gonna fill that shape color once i'm done with that once i'm satisfied with the shape i can duplicate this by holding down alt and dragging it to the side so you don't have to redraw the shape and i'm gonna duplicate it again for the rest of the shapes like this. Once you're done with the shape, select the layer, control click on the layer and shut off the eye and go to the main layer, control X to cut it and control shift and V to paste it. Shift control and V to paste it in place. So I'm gonna rename that layer so this will be layer number three and I'll do the same control click on the layer shut off the eye and select the main image layer control X to cut it and control shift and V to paste it and rename the layer and I'm gonna do this for the rest of the layers all right once you're done with that select all the shape layers and we're gonna delete that now we're gonna hit Ctrl S to save it. Rename the file as iPhone buttons and save it. All right, now that you have the icons ready, let's import the footage inside After Effects. Since this is an S-Log2 footage, let's convert this into a Rec. 709 color space. For that, I'm using a lot. There are a lot of LUTs available online. You can grab one for yourself and you can just apply it using a Lumetri effect. All right, let's track the camera by hitting this track camera and wait for After Effects to track the camera for us. Now that we have the tracking information, let's draw a circle around this dot and we're gonna right click and create solid and camera. And we're gonna right click again. This time we're gonna create an L object in case if we need that. Select the solid layer hit S and scale it up. Grab the pen tool and we're gonna draw a box around the screen, selecting on the solid. Just make sure you turn off the visibility of the solid and draw a box around the screen. Once you're done drawing the mask, turn back the solid on. You'll see something like this. Turn that off again and it's time to import the Photoshop project, drag and drop it and change this to composition and hit OK. Double click to open it and select the first layer, Control X to cut it, go back to the composition, Control V to paste it, make this a 3D layer and you can see there it's floating on the screen. If you play it back, you see that it's on the screen, but we'll have to size it down to match the exact phone screen so select this footage and the camera tracker and we're gonna select this point so right click and we're gonna create a new solid and we're gonna copy the properties of this hit P on the keyboard to bring up the position copy the position and paste it on the layer and I'm gonna hit R and copy the orientation and paste it there and I'm going to rotate and match it manually like this with the phone screen okay if you need it you can scale it down and 
reposition it again. All right, if I play it back now, you can see the icon is stuck to the screen, just like that. And I'm gonna select this solid layer. We don't need it anymore, so I'm gonna delete this and select the layer, Control D to duplicate it and move it to the side because this is the exact same thing. We're gonna go to the iPhone buttons and I'm gonna cut this and paste it inside this. I'm gonna make this a 3D layer and I'm gonna copy the position of the first one and paste it and I'm gonna copy the rotation and I'm gonna paste it here. I'm gonna hit S and copy the scale as well and paste it here and I'm gonna delete the ones we duplicate and you have this so we can always readjust this I'm gonna scale it up a little bit like this all right let's go back to the iPhone buttons composition and I'm gonna select in bulk like this and I'm gonna copy it and paste it here and make sure you make it this 3d layer and what I'm gonna do is copy the properties of this layer P hold down shift R hold down shift and S so I'm gonna select this position scale and rotation copy it and paste it one by one so paste that and reposition this once you're done with this layer so you'll have to repeat the exact same thing for the rest of the icons one by one now that you have the icons in place select all the layers the icon layers hit p on the keyboard and we're going to set a keyframe for the position set a keyframe and we're going to move forward a few frames and i'm going to change the values of the y-axis so that the icons are floating in the air so let me change this y values you have this and what i'm going to do next is select all the keyframes and hit f9 for easy ease go to the graph and i'm going to change the graph to something like this make sure you're in a speed graph so i'm going to change the graph to something like this one and if i go back you'll have a smooth animation like that so what I'm going to do next is offset the timing of the animation. I'll stop here. Hold down shift and hit page down once. Select this keyframe and move it here. And I'm going to do the same like this. Hold down shift, page down once and grab this and shift it here. Hold down shift, page down once. And I'm going to set this keyframe here. And I'm going to do this for the rest of the layers. All right, once you have that collapsed that, select the solid layer, turn on the visibility for that layer, and I'm gonna make this an adjustment layer. So click on this. So that is an adjustment layer now. I'm gonna go to the effects and presets and search for a blur, and I'm gonna pick a Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna increase the size of this blurness so that you have a blurry screen like that. And lastly, I'm gonna select this camera, move it up here, collapse that, go to the camera options, and I'm gonna turn on the depth of field, and I'm gonna increase the aperture of that, and adjust the focus distance, so that you have the exact same focal distance like your camera, and the blur effect like you have in the real live action footage. All right, that is how you can create this kind of floating effect in After Effects. I hope you learned something from this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure to watch this video for this type of After Effects tutorial.